thing. There's so much footage as an actor to go and study interviews with all the different uh, soldiers, you know, kind of try and get an insight into it. I'm, I'm uh, just getting flashbacks to you just watching the film, never mind living yeah, it. Yeah, and that's oh. what we, we, met, we met Stu and stuff like that, kind of after it went to the movie premiere, and Stu and that said, you know, 99.9%. I mean, that was as, as close as you could get to it. And um, there, was, there was moments where we'd chat to the, the military guys and we'd say, you know, like, Nobody could ever no, know what he's went through that day. I said, but we did. We filmed that day for six weeks. We were six weeks of life. There was there's days where you're in shots. There was a day where my my character's legs uh, being I mean, blown off, and I've got a sock on that's got a you know a, a prosthetic on it, and my, my legs buried in the sand, and I'm lying there, and I'm I'm watching Mark Stanley, who was in Game of Thrones and stuff, a fantastic actor, and David Elliott, who won the BAFTA, recreating the last moments of Corporal Mark Wright's life. And I'm lying there as Stu, you know, going, geez, oh, this happened. This is like this is like an out of body experience. I am I'm lying here hearing the words the guys said to each other before one of them passed away. And I'm just lying crying. And then they go, cut, reset, I'll do it again. Yeah. And then they do it again and again and again. They're going, geez, oh, so when I said to Stu, I was like, nobody would know what you've been through. I said, but we must be the closest thing to it, the actors that were there and that production yeah. team that were there. Because we lived the script for Six weeks. I mean, even in the bar and stuff like that, we would call. It, we 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 did all the boot camp, the training, and the buddy buddy system and stuff, which is fascinating. You know, how they look after each other, uh, and we very quickly went to. It was too hard to remember everybody's real name and everybody. We just started calling each other character names. So there's a lot of method was going on very early on, and that you know like. Uh, and when we still meet up, you still you still call Mark Tug. Do you know what I mean? I still get called Stu sometimes, you know, kind of, because um, we did, we, that was how we knew each other. We were living, even in the hotel complex afterwards. Do you know what I mean? And, and we, we learned for the soldiers that they're, they're very touchy feely, they look after each other, you know, they'll groom each other's hair and stuff like that, because that's, they're living together constantly. I mean, yeah, the, you know the, I mean? So, the level, the bonding that yeah, happens. Yeah, and so, so we, we, we had to, we had to, we had to manufacture that and create that and, you know, do it enough that it became normal. So you know, if you went on a kajak, like the guys that will come to London to see the Billy Tim show, so the whole night, the the the, the Sunday night sold it, and it's it's pretty much the kajaki. It's a preview for the cast and crew because it's all people that were involved in the movie are coming. But if you came along, you'd see very quickly in the pub they're all slapping each other's backsides and you know, kind of yeah, hugs and kisses and all that stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of there's no your standard boys' night out. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a mix of the military, the acting. Do you know what I mean? And just young guys that and, have and been all, through something together. You know? Yeah, also, I mean, <coughs> fuck. It, 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 mm. I did one scene where it was, uh, it was just a showreel scene, but it was a it was a funeral scene and you're saying goodbye to, you know, the love of your life. Mm. And doing that like five, six times ago, fuck, you know. Mm. Imagine, oh God. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing, if anybody sees the movie, I, I've got to um, play somebody who's just lost a leg, right? So, you know, I don't know what it's like to lose your leg in an IED. No idea, but I you know, played football with guys that have uh, you know, lost, you know, kneecaps have been popped out and stuff like that. I've seen some some stuff and I've had injuries myself, but nothing at that scale. So how mm. do you how do you create that? And uh, and if you if you watch the movie there, the way I played it was I, I interviewed Stu, and Stu said to me that um, when he stood on them, uh, so how, uh, Stu was walking back with a rucksack and uh, and he stood on a rock and the rock moved, and that's how he how his foot hit the ground. So it was like a twist of the ankle, and he and he, and he went up. Uh, so he said when he first went up and he landed, he said uh, his lines in the in the script. He said, "Oh for fuck's sake!" And he said, "Oh for fuck's sake!" The way I've, I've just spilled that juice. Oh for fuck's sake! I just can't believe I've done that. That's, it wasn't he screaming, "Oh for fuck's sake!" It was, "Oh for fuck's sake!" Right? It was like, uh, as if, "I can't believe I've just done that." He says, uh, and, and then he said to me, and then um, my training kicked in, and I went into my pouch, and I got my morphine, and I stuck it in my leg, and you know, kind of all the training kicked in and stuff like that. And I was sitting there in his house when he told me, I'm going, it's, it's, it's not going to be, this is the actor in me and the producer, I'm going, it's going to be a great scene if you do everything you're supposed to do. You know, if the training kicks in and it just goes exactly as it's supposed to, it's not that, that great a scene. Um, and uh, and I was like, okay, so we, then we went to the pub uh, with a lot of the, the soldier boys and I was saying, I said, I was interviewing Stu, it was tough, you know, to hear his story first time. I said, he was telling us, you know, kind of the train just kicks in and the morphine and all that stuff. And they're like, daddy, fuck, he was greeting for his mommy and he was screaming this, he was screaming that and all that stuff. And I'm going, why did they say this? Because he doesn't remember. He was in hospital for months after it, you know, like kind of in his head, the training kicked in. 
but when it actually happened, he just lost his leg. He's on, you know, when he put the morphine in, he was all over the place. It wasn't him that administered the morphine, it was somebody else. I was like, oh wow, this is great. So what that gave me was artistic license then. Mm. To give Stu what he told me, he told me the oh for fuck's sake. So that's in the movie, when you watch the movie, that's my tip of the hat to Stu. So stand in the mine, go down, poof, oh for fuck's sake. Look at the leg, fuck, and then it's mine. And as of that moment you watch it, that is me playing what I think I would do if I lost my leg. Right, because yeah. in amongst it, I, I chatted this too, got mixed reports for him, got mixed reports for the soldier, and I thought, I can only play my truth then in that moment. Yeah, what yeah, what yeah. would a human being go through in that moment? And um, <clears throat> and the other thing I, I decided was, I don't know um, if you've ever had a, a bump to your nose, right? And somebody comes over and says, let me see it. And the first thing you do is say, don't fucking touch yeah, it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, I thought this would be an extreme version of that. You know, the last thing you want if you look down and your legs half, half away is somebody to come and touch it. Right, so I thought, <laughs> unbeknown to the other cast members, I thought, I'm not going to tell them, but they're going to need to wrestle me. I'm not letting them put the tourniquet on, on the leg, so they're going to need to tire me out or hold me down to put that tourniquet on. So obviously, I'm in the ground, my leg's buried in the ground, I can't go anywhere. So, what happens the first day is they've got all these big piles of dirt on sheets, everyone's standing by and action. They throw the dirt up, the dirt hits me, and that's me to act that the mines just went off, right? So, oh, for fuck's sake. The lads, I don't get me the morphine, right? The guys all come over, and at that point, I'm saying, Leave me alone. I'm wrestling with the guys, don't fucking touch me, leave my leg, don't touch me. So, uh, David Elliott, he didn't know what was going to happen, so he's having to grab my arms and he's trying to hold me down. And I'm a big boy compared to David, so I'm fighting with him. Uh, 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 Grant's there, um, big Grant Kilburn, uh, he's, he's his job's to put the tourniquet on the leg in the scene. So bear in mind, he's he's got me and me and uh, me and David wrestling, and he's trying to do his stuff, and he's like, "Let me do my job, let me do my job." I don't know if he's saying that as an actor or as a soldier. He's like, "Let me do my job, let me do my job," and it's an amazing piece of you know, cinema. Oh, um, yeah. But, but there's so many different aspects of it that, that make it that, and the fact that you know that that's that's a true story. That's 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 what these guys were going through. Do you know what I mean? And, and I always thought that Stu knew when the turner came went on that was no leg anymore. You were never you were, it need to be done to save his life. But also that, that that there won't be a bottom half of your leg mm. if you survive. You know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> so yeah. So an incredible, um, incredible story, and the reviews are just phenomenal. And the nice thing about it is, when you make a movie like that, normally you make any, anything. You always, you do a comedy, you're like hoping the audience like it. You get good reviews, right? That's a like, that's a success I mean, for me. You know, right? This is the best case yeah. scenario. Yeah. We both like it. You know. Well, the, the this movie was different as. We, the critics might have liked it and the audience might have liked it, but if Stu sat in his house or any time they watched it and he went, no, it's a lot of shite, they messed it up, that's not my story, then we failed. So the first audience I was responsible to was Stu. I was wanting Stu to watch it and Stu to like it. Now I then thought, I don't care if anybody else hates it. If Stu sits in his house and watches his story on the screen and he goes, brilliant, nailed it, Scott. Even if the critics didn't like it, even if the audience thought it was awful, then I've done my job because it's Stu's story that I'm telling as part of a collective. The next responsibility then is to all the soldiers that were there that day. You want mm -hmm. to do a good job for them, do you mean to tell their story? Uh, you've got Corporal Mark Wright and his family. You know, you, you, yeah. you, want, you want to do a good job for them. Uh, the, the regiments in general, then the British Army in general, you know, you were representing them on screen. Uh, and then it goes out to things like, it'd be nice if the audience like it. It'd be good if we get a good review. But it was, it was, back, it was a different way of looking at the movie. If that makes sense, it was a really strange way of going. People are going like, you know, on the night of the movie premiere in London, we hadn't seen it. Um, was that the first time? Okay. The first time we seen it um, because the, a lot of the military guys were given uh, early preview screenings if they wanted to, uh, you know, kind of in case it brought by any P PTSD or anything like that. So, but Stu took great pleasure in saying, "No, no, I'll just see it at the premiere with everybody else." So we were going into a movie that I hadn't seen, Stu hadn't seen, and for the first wee while in the movie, I'm just watching Stu in the audience. I'm just watching him, is he, is he enjoying it? Do you know what I mean? I'm not watching the movie, I'm watching him going... It's like being with your dad, like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> is he like it? Is he, is, he, is he happy? And after the movie, it was really funny, after the movie, we all went out and we're doing all the press and doing chats and everything else. People watched, why would you hang in the movie, Scott, you've seen it now? And, uh, and, uh, and Stu hadn't approached me. And uh, Julia, his partner, came over and she's like, how are you doing? That's amazing, all that. Blah, blah. I, says, I says, is he alright? Does he like it? Oh yeah, 
is fucking brilliant. Says, he didn't say it, and I was worried he didn't like it, and he hadn't spoken. No, no, he just got caught up, and every now and then he came over, he's like, oh no, I love it, it's amazing. And it's like, wow, just what a relief, do you know what I mean? Kind of, and obviously Stu's family and all that stuff, yeah, really, yeah. do you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, but I'm really glad that it's not like, you know, you um, any Scottish person that, that's watching Braveheart will normally correct anybody that watches and goes, but that's not the real, you know, that's not the real story, you know, kind of. So, um, and the Scottish people do not sound like that. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> thankfully Stu doesn't have to do that because we got it right and that was really important.